The EPA and other federal agencies are charged with safeguarding the environment, including the lakes, and there could be some big changes from the new president. Brian Kelly is an emergency responder with the US EPA. He's one of the first on the scene of a hazmat spill or an area of land polluted by heavy industry. And we need the enforcement staff to track down the successful corporations that are responsible for this contamination. You know, it's holding the companies responsible and saving the public money that we're having to spend to clean these sites up. And frankly, it's, it's just the right thing to do. But he says the job was made more difficult over the past four years. The EPA's budget was slashed. Staffing was cut by more than 20 percent. Nicole Cantello is president of the union representing about 1,000 federal EPA workers in the Great Lakes region. We are down a lot of people in the region, and you can't enforce without enforcement personnel. You can bring less cases against polluters, so then you can have less compliance with environmental laws. When there's less compliance with environmental laws, more pollution goes out into the Great Lakes. The EPA did not respond to our request for a comment. Howard Lerner, CEO of the Environmental Policy Law Center based in Chicago, agrees. He's looking for the new administration to pursue environmental justice. A disproportionate amount of landfills, incinerators, polluting power plants have been located in lower income communities along the Great Lakes in the Midwest. And as we know, lower income communities tend to be people of color. That pollution has a disproportionate impact on people of color in lower income communities. Jeremy Orr is a lawyer with the Natural Resources Defense Council in Chicago. He hopes the Biden administration will enable citizens to bring claims against polluters in their neighborhoods. In Southwest Detroit, where you have dozens of uh, industrial polluters uh, right, at, right butting up against residential neighborhoods, and, and these folks have no kind of tangible legal and policy tools to defend themselves from these discriminatory practices. To allow you know, communities to hold these polluters accountable, I think is a huge change in policy that you know, we could see. While some might hope for the federal government to halt two controversial pipeline projects in the Great Lakes region, that intervention is unlikely. Built in the 1960s by Canadian pipeline company Enbridge, Line 3 carries crude oil more than 1,000 miles from Alberta to Superior, Wisconsin. It crosses through tribal land, it crosses through uh, sort of a water-rich region of northern Minnesota near the Mississippi headwaters. In 1991, a spill from Line 3 poured thousands of gallons of crude oil into surrounding wetlands near Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Enbridge is replacing the pipeline now, but some worry about another spill. And it is considered a risk to spilling in wild rice beds and in important lakes where tribes uh, hunt and fish and just sort of all around. So it's definitely considered a, a major spill risk at this point. These concerns notwithstanding, permits have been issued for Enbridge to replace Line 3 and construction has already begun. Another controversial Enbridge pipeline, Line 5, runs beneath the Straits of Mackinac, where Lakes Michigan and Huron meet. In November of 2020, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer notified Enbridge that the pipeline's easement is being revoked, meaning the line would have to shut down by May of 2021. Whitmer said Enbridge, quote, has imposed on the people of Michigan an unacceptable risk of a catastrophic oil spill in the Great Lakes. But two months later, an Enbridge vice president said the company had, quote, no intention of shutting down Line 5. More court battles seem inevitable. Enbridge has proposed a new pipeline that would run through a tunnel beneath the Straits, a project subject to federal approval. The tunnel had seemed likely to remain a state issue, but as the conflict escalates, the federal intervention some environmentalists hope for could become more likely. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.